Hi there, Agile friends. I'll come in here just with a quick note to let you know that the Agile Online Summit 2022 is coming soon. To know more, check out bit.ly forward slash AOS 2022. That's all one word, all lowercase, bit.ly forward slash AOS 2022. Now, stick around to the end of the episode if you want to know more. But for now, on to the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our product owner and TGIF episode. Hey, Allison, welcome back. Thanks for having me back. So we're 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 in a terrace looking at the uh, what is it? is it Pikes Peak the mountain there? Yes, Pikes Peak. We're we're looking at Pikes Peak. We're enjoying a nice, relaxing afternoon. It's it's not too chilly like it was for you this morning, but it's a bit warmer. And uh, we're talking about you know these war stories about product owners, and everybody loves war stories, right? So. The first one is, of course, the funniest one. Uh, the second one hopefully gives us something we can use as a measuring uh, template for other product owners. But the first one is, is, is the coolest, is the one that I'm most eager to hear. Share with us, Alison, <laughs> the worst product owner you've ever worked with. What did they do? <laughs> they were wonderful. They, we went through their periods of growth. And we went through their their failures and my own together. So disclaimer, they were all wonderful. And we just we did just grow together. But I did I did notice like the bad behaviors where we were about ready to just drop atomic elbows on each other. Was, <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine what that looked right? like. Right. Oh, such fun retrospectives. Love them though. So I noticed the two biggest things that I faced of challenging uh, with challenging product owners is either one, they come from a technical background, or two, they they don't come from a technical background. So that pretty much those, covers everything. Right, right. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. So if they're too technical, that product owner was incredibly solutioning. Like the whole backlog was just a task list of down to. I'm like, do you want to? I would just make snarky comments, but like, do you want to put a task in there for them to go on a bathroom break and a lunch too? Like, oh my god, what's the value that and vision, detail? dude? Like. Yes. Oh my goodness. Like down to, you know, exactly which, oh my gosh, I don't even want to get into it, but yeah, super micromanaging. The team was like, you're taking my autonomy and my authority. And I don't want to just, you know, be your code monkey here. Okay. Like, code I'm, monkey I have is the word, by too, the way. It's right? definitely, definitely. A yeah. Word. They did not want that at all. And so that was an issue. And the other bad side of that coin of with another bad behavior is, you know, by no fault of their own, they didn't come from a technical background, but there was no understanding. And really there was a struggle to communicate with our end consumers who were technical users. This is like a highly technical space that, you know, that, that's a tough spot to be in where miscommunication can happen between what the customer needs and what's actually getting added into the backlog. Sometimes there could be a breakdown there. So enter the scrum master and coaching opportunities. So that's a rough bad behavior. It sounds like something that you've experienced too. And it's it's not just me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I remember technical product owners or product owners with a technical background rather that wanted mm -hmm. to describe the details down to the bits that were added in what format and what sequence <laughs> into a network packet. <laughs> yeah. Talk about oh, what problem are we trying to solve? Problem? Who said right. problem? This is a technical specification. <laughs> yeah. It's so interesting too, because like I, I love that confidence for them. But you know, if you've been out of that technical sphere for several years, it's like, dude, you're behind. Like I'm not using the same iPhone I had five years ago. So <laughs> from a technical standpoint, let's just trust the technical team that's actually been, you know, in that code base. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> let's trust the technical team. And not actually, like uh, th that that's a, a, a big challenge for us as Scrum Masters. So what have you learned from these experiences that, that helps you? And I would say potentially even both types of product owners, the ones with and without technical background, to trust yeah. the team to come up with the solutions. How, how do you help them these days? You know, it, it works really well for me since I don't come from a technical background at all. And I don't come from a business background. I come from that teaching background. So I can sit real happy in the middle and say, wow, can you explain that to me? I don't understand what you're asking for. And just, you know, how can you simplify it? 
just pretend to be Michael Scott, maybe explain it like I'm five you know, from the <laughs> office. Like, how, how can you make this accessible so I understand what your customer needs? And same thing from a tech, asking the tech team when they're getting really, really in the weeds. Like, and I can tell the product owner is just not following along with what they're saying at all. And when both of our eyes glaze over, I'm like, all right, hey, what does that mean? Can you explain it so I understand? And just, you know, approaching with that humility of, yeah, that doesn't make sense. What can you clarify here? Or what else could be true? It, it really it, is about bridging that gap of communication right? between the PO and the team. And, and in your non-technical background PO, also between the PO and the customer or user. Right? Yes. Yeah. So another bad beat. You want another bad behavior? Yeah. I've got more. Should, like, let's, let's, <laughs> let's go for go. it. We, we still have a little bit of drink in the glass. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> So I also have noticed um, sometimes it's really tempting for the product owner when they don't know who that end customer is and there's no real clear way for them to collect data or goes directly to the customer or end user. Um, it's really hard for them to close that feedback loop. So I've, I've heard direct quotes, I am the customer <laughs> from the product owner. And I was like, oh, no, your money bags, like, not really, that's not fair, but you're not the customer, you're the representative, and you speak for them on their behalf, but if you're never talking to them, how do you know we're doing the right thing? And to me, that points to an organizational failure and maybe a lack of direction and focus, and it's easier to just say, I am the customer, rather than just saying, I, I don't really know, and I don't know how to contact them or make sure that what I'm asking you to build is the right thing. Absolutely. That, that is a great point. Also, because the job of the product owner is not to know what the customer knows, but rather to find out and somehow document for the team right. what problems the customer is trying right. to solve, right? And that, and that ability, and I think this comes also to, the, to, to what we were talking about, bridging the communication gap, because it really is. Just like the Scrum Master is bridging the communication gap between the mm -hmm. team and all kinds of other people around, including the PO, the PO is bridging the communication gap between the customer or the market and the rest of the organization. Right. So now we turn our attention to something different, the role model, the best mm. product owner you've ever worked with, Allison. Yeah. How were they? Yeah, they were wonderful. So the, the same product owners from the bad stories are the same product owners from the good as well. So if you're struggling with a, a bad product owner and you're like, oh, there's no hope, take heart. <laughs> there, they, it, there are opportunities to coach. For me, it worked out that, you know, they, they were able to, overcome some of those difficulties that we faced in the bad product owner behavior section. And they were able to really unlock their, their true potential and, you know, step into those great product owner characteristics to the, to the point of when I've had new product owners struggling, I'm like, Hey, go talk to this person. This would be a great mentor for you. They've been there, they've done that and they've grown. So it's been really empowering for me to watch that happen. So the great product owners, they are just customer advocates and they're vision and value driven. They can, they can stay focused and they're partners. They're not dictators. So they listen to input from the team and, and not just the customer. And when we talk about like a mindset and a mentality shift, the best product owners are able to speak to the value being delivered to the end customer in the end and the problems that we're solving and for me, that's like, you, you got a manifesto mentality. Awesome. Like you're, you're focused on agile as you know, at, at the heart of it. So awesome. My, my favorite thing to ask in a refinement session is so what, like, who cares, <laughs> you know, to pretend to be a sassy team. And if I notice, you know, we're not focusing on who, who, who matters at the end, that end customer. So those great product owners are, are all about, you know, they have that sense of urgency too, where you can feel that underlying, you know, hey, if we don't do this and we don't prioritize this next most important thing first in the backlog, our customers will suffer because blank problem. So they're always focused on that when they're adding backlog items, when they're prioritizing what goes next and closing that feedback loop to make sure that when we're reviewing what we've done at the end of, you know, an iteration that we did what we needed to do to help solve the problem for the end customer. Absolutely. Uh, I, I really like that phrase, if we don't add this 
to our to the top of our list as priority one, our customers will suffer because. And mm-hmm. and what comes out after the because is really the key part. Yes. But the reason why we listen to it is because the PO knows the customer and says they will suffer, right? Like, and mm-hmm. and that's actually, uh, I think. Um, you said it before, like they are the advocate for the customer, right? They represent the customer's needs and challenges for the team to then feel, you know, empathize with the customer. Right. Yeah. I had one product owner actually go sit, I think it's called like Y courting or whatever, where he plugged into what they were doing. Um, cause it was, we were creating technology for, um, a member facing team. And he actually went and sat with them and watched what that process was like on their computer and watched it crash and see the pain when they're like on the phone with somebody. And it's like, Oh, this is miserable. I'm so sorry. I'm having technical issues. You know, we've all heard that when we've called it somewhere before. And yeah, to, to watch that as the representative of the customer and come back and be like, you guys, that was brutal. Like we need to add this to the backlog right now to fix this. Absolutely. I thought that was super powerful. And that, that's a great example of what great product owners would do, right? Like go to go to the place of work, mm-hmm. feel the pain of the of the customers and users. Allison, we're getting yeah. close to the end though, but uh, before okay. we do go, do share with us where can people find out more about you and the work that you're doing? Um, I guess LinkedIn. I'm not I'm not super active on the social media space, but you know, reach out and I uh, I'll I'll be happy to engage with you. I'm, I'm working more within my own uh, company, but happy to branch out and meet people at conferences or at meetups and yeah, uh, LinkedIn. I think you have my, my link so we can keep chatting and keep the conversation going. I am always looking for new mentors, new friends, um, new people to help grow my own thinking and learning. Absolutely. And I, I'm sure there will be people who also seek that from you. So uh, reach out. Allison is on LinkedIn. I'll put the link in the show notes so that people can easily find it. Allison, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for your generosity with your time and your knowledge. Oh, thank you so much for, for allowing me to come speak with you and, and sharing your time with me. This has been wonderful. Hi there, Agile friends. Thank you for sticking around to know more about this year's Agile Online Summit. The summit will have four keynotes and four tracks you will not want to miss. The keynotes will touch on critical topics for us, from delivering on time to helping you to focus on sustainability. The four tracks are tools, so we'll focus on tools you need to excel at your job, but also your mission. We'll also have a track on sustainability, which is, of course, about people and their sustainable pace, but it's also about how do we bring sustainability to the products and the planet we inhabit. We'll have a third track about happiness, talking about doing what we love and, most crucially, loving what we do. And finally, the fourth track will be live. It will be mostly hands-on sessions to help you roll up your sleeves together with the presenters. Oh, and we will also have a coaching clinic, as we usually do, organized to help you discuss and get inspired to solve the hardest challenges you face at work. This year, we'll have a special emphasis on interaction with your peers, so get your ticket and join the Slack at bit.ly forward slash AOS 2022. As always, we have free tickets for anyone that wants to attend live and the VIP tickets for those of you who want to keep the videos forever. So check them out at bit.ly forward slash AOS 2022. I'll see you on the conference floor. One more week of the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast is over. But there's a lot more we have to share. We have developed our own membership site where you find a community of active and engaged Scrum Masters. In this site, you get access to exclusive content and get to interact with us, your podcast hosts, as well as the best Scrum Masters in the world. Join us at scrummastertoolbox.com forward slash podcast and keep this podcast free of advertising. See you next week for one more week full of Scrum Master tips and tricks. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.